Yeah, you, I think you, that was you, you can watch it via the live stream. Right, so, so just to be clear, if we did want to watch it via the live stream, which might be useful to, to see who's involved, how would we access that? Uh, it's um, the, the live stream link is available on Cornwall Council's website on the front cover of the agenda. Uh, I'd just like to confirm it's Emma Co, Democratic Officer. We are now live and the meeting is being live streamed. So I will continue the commencement of the meeting. So good morning, everybody. Welcome to this virtual meeting of the Licensing Act subcommittee. Before consideration of today's meeting, I will outline the protocols for the meeting. Today's meeting is being live streamed to the public via Microsoft Teams and is also being recorded. When members are speaking, they may choose to use their video if the council's live stream fails during the meeting and we cannot share the proceedings the meeting will be adjourned so that access can be restored if the issue cannot be resolved the chairman will halt the meeting and the remaining business will be concluded at a future date if a member experiences a technical issue the chairman will adjourn for a short period to try to re-establish their connection as members are called to speak the chairman will remind you to switch on your microphone if for some reason you cannot be heard, the Democratic officer will advise you. The vote will be taken by roll call and the result announced by the Democratic officer. Members must be present for the duration of the discussion on the application in order to be able to vote. We have public representation at the meeting today and they will be joining the meeting via telephone. Where a member has declared a non a non registrable interest or a disclosable pecuniary interest in any virtue of a trade union membership in a matter they must leave the virtual meeting. Their departure will be confirmed and they will be invited to rejoin the meeting at the appropriate time. To confirm the procedure for today's meeting is that members of the committee who wish to speak on an item should indicate by putting an X in the chat box. Before we start today's business, I will ask the committee members to confirm they are present and state their electoral division member. I'll now call your name. Please, can you confirm your name and electoral division member? Councillor Luke. Uh, Councillor Matt Luke, uh, um, Divi uh, Pembroke and Piscopa Division. Councillor Lennox Boyd. Good morning, <coughs> Councillor Sheila Lennox Boyd, representing Saltash North. Good morning. Thank you. Councillor Martin. Good morning, John Martin, Cornwall Councillor for Helston South. Thank you. I can confirm that the following officers are also present. Mark Andrews, legal officer, myself, Emma Code, democratic officer, and the licensing officer, Kath Woofenden. The first item on today's agenda is election of chairman. Could I ask for nominations for the election of chairman, please? I'd like to nominate, this is uh, John Martin, councillor. Um, I'd like to nominate uh, councillor Luke. Okay, is there a seconder? Yes, I'm happy to second Councillor Sheila Lennox Boyd. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, I'll do a roll call. Could you all confirm whether you're for or against or abstaining? Councillor Luke? Uh, for. Councillor Lennox Boyd? For. Councillor Martin? For. Thank you. I can confirm that Councillor Luke has been appointed chairman of today's meeting. Thank you. All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the licensing meeting this morning. Um, in a moment, I will um, hand over um, to your solicitor to put a few points out. But in the meantime, uh, we've done. Our, could I just have the the names of the other speakers that are speaking on behalf of the application and anyone else that's, that's here as well, please, just for my references. Chairman, it's Emma Coe, Democratic Officer. For those people who've joined since I made my earlier announcement, if yeah. I have muted your telephone, you'll need to press star six to unmute yourself. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Chair. And just to say, it takes a bit of time to press star six, so there might be a delay when we're asked to speak. Uh, my name is Lawrence, I'm the production manager for Wavelength Media. I'm accompanied by Lynn Lee, who is the director of Wavelength Media, and we are representing the applicants. So that's Lawrence. Uh, yeah. It's Lynn, Lynn Lee, director, and Lawrence, production manager. Yeah, I'm, I'm Lynn Lee. It's obviously a bit of an unusual name just to confirm. Mr. Lynn Lee Lewis. 
and I'm one of the wavelength directors representing uh, the application. Lawrence and Lily. Okay, lovely. Um, um, we've got John Fitter, I know, uh, speaking later on as well. I, is that everyone that else? Is that everyone that's speaking, Emma? Uh, Chairman, uh, we, we also have Sue Edwards on the line, Anne-Marie Jameson and Councillor Hick from Newquay Town Council. Sue Edwards present, sir. Um, Anne-Marie Jameson from Cornwall Council Health and Safety is here as well. Uh, Anne-Marie. Uh, Councillor Fitter, um, Councillor Luke, present, sir, and um, wait to be called to speak. Thank you. And, uh, Councillor Hicks from Newquay Town Council is here and ready to speak. Councillor Hicks. Right, lovely. Thank you. <clears throat> OK, I will now um, I'll hand over to um, uh, so if I right, if I uh, just ask everyone else um, the, to introduce themselves, our, our councillors have introduced ourselves. But if we could start with um, everyone else to introduce the staff, starting with Lawrence and um, Lenny and from the wavelength and just go around so we we know who everyone is and what they're representing, please. Uh, so, Chair Lawrence here, can I just confirm whether this is our opportunity to just give a statement about the proposal or if, if uh, this is just... Not, not just, yes, we're just introducing who's, who's on the call. Oh, well, hello, Chair. My name is Lindley Lewis. Um, I'm one of the directors of Wavelength Media. Good morning, everybody. Uh, and as I just mentioned, my name is Lawrence Moore Crane. I'm the production manager uh, at Wavelength Media. Good morning. OK, thank you. And who else have we got? Sue Edwards. Oh, Sue Edwards. Yeah, OK, Sue, yes. Uh, Sue Edwards, licensing officer, Devon and Cornwall Police. Um, and we've got John Fetter um, and Councillor Hicks from Newquay and Anne-Marie from the Council. OK, right, I've got that yep. all down now. OK. OK, right, uh, on to Chairman 4 then. Um, what will happen this morning is the uh, licensee after the officer has stated the what we the license we are listening to this morning um representatives of the license will have their a chance to speak and and so forth and then and then other parties will have their chance to counter speak up against or for the, the license or so forth um and the, the members will ask questions in the meantime of, the, of both representatives um, for and against the application. So I'll hand over to the licensing officer for the moment to read out the application this morning. Yeah. And oh, sorry. sorry, yes. Sorry, Chairman, it's Emma Co, Democratic Officer. Uh, before we actually commence the item, we do have some housekeeping items on the agenda. I, so I, I was gonna, just going to say that before. Yeah, and, and also we do have the statement to read out regarding His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh as well. Yes, uh, and um, get Mark to read out um, a statement after that. So I think if you want to carry on with that, then please, Emma, before we proceed. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Um, I, number two on the agenda is apologies for absence. I can confirm I've received no apologies for absence for today's meeting. Mm -hmm. Item three is declarations of interest. Um, could I ask if any members do have any declarations of interest they advise now, please? I have none. No, I have none. Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm there are no declarations of interest. So if we could move on to uh, the legal officer and the statement. Thank you. Well, hand over to you then, Mark, please. Thank you, Chairman. OK, my name's Mark Andrews. I'm uh, the solicitor advising the subcommittee this morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, I've just been asked to speak in relation to a number of procedural issues that have been raised prior to the meeting. Um, and just to cover them off, just to just to provide clarification so that there's no um, ambiguity in relation to these proceedings. 
Uh, one issue that's been raised, uh, sorry, and just to clarify, the reason I'm raising these now is because they don't form part of the application or representations in so far as uh, they don't relate to the licensing objective. So they're kind of just a, a almost housekeeping, but they are they're important points that have been raised. And I just think it's it's wise and I've given advice that it's wise to just uh, deal with them now and then hopefully we can proceed with the meeting. So the first point first point that's been raised is that the address of the um, application premises was incorrect and therefore the application should be deferred. Um, the position with an address is that where a postal address is available, then that should be provided. Um, however, in this case, as we are aware, it's a field. Um, if one considers what a postal address is, address would normally refer to a house number or a house name or a flat number, etc. But this is a field. The address of the field that's been given um, identifies the field if you if you research it. But also the applicant actually gave an ordinance survey reference number, uh, which again allows uh, allows the field to be identified. In addition to that, as part of the application, a number of plans were included and these plans um, I would su suggest very, uh, you know, very clearly show the field that is proposed to be used. So that's the issue there. Um, the next point that was raised is that um, because of COVID, the signage wasn't appropriate. Uh, I, I do take that point that because of COVID there's less people out and about. However, when the government made the COVID regulations, they didn't amend the Licensing Act to make it a requirement for there to be more notices or extra notices, etc. So as far as the applicant goes, the applicant has complied with the law in relation to advertising the application. Um, it's not up to the council to go out and check every application that signage has been put up. It's up to the applicant to put up appropriate signage. And in this case, there's no evidence that there wasn't in a, that, that there was inappropriate signage. Um, notices were provided to the applicant. The applicant states that they put the notices up. That's in accordance with the law. I do, like I say, I take the point that COVID means there'll be less people out and about, but that's the law. The law wasn't changed in that regard. So there's no issue with that. Another issue raised is rare birds. Um, rare birds aren't a consideration, unfortunately, for the subcommittee. They can only refer to the Licensing Act, um, the four licensing objectives under the Licensing Act. None of those relate to um, animals. So there's uh, prevention of crime and disorder, prevention, um, sorry, public safety, protection of children from harm and prevention of public nuisance. Um, so it doesn't come under that. So again, whilst members may be sympathetic to that representation, which they know that are, which everyone would be, I would suggest, it's not relevant to the Licensing Act. Um, the other issue was raised um, that there was no reference to a cinema on the application. Uh, a cinema comes under regulated entertainment as far as the legislation is concerned and the application clearly uh, applies for regulated entertainments. So there's no need for them to say, there's no need for the applicant to refer specifically to a cinema. Obviously, the details were set out in the application in any event. So if, if one was to read the application, it's clear that there's a proposal for a cinema, but they don't have to put this put cinema um, in the uh, part of the application where they say what they're applying for, if that makes sense. Um, and the only other issues was, was raised by um, members that wished or and other persons that wish to access these meetings through teams. Um, that's a decision that's been made at a senior level. Uh, I don't know the ins and outs of that decision. I've just been advised that that decision was made and uh, therefore members have to phone in in the same way that um, other persons as they're referred to in the law have to phone in. So I, I take the point on that as well, but that's just the procedure that we follow in these meetings. So I, I hope that those points, uh, they're, all, they're all important points, Chairman, uh, and they're perfectly valid points, but hopefully my response to those points provides some clarification. Um, I'm not in any way saying, you know, they're not important or anything like that. I'm just dealing with them so that the, the meeting can go ahead in relation to the application and, and not procedural issues. If an individual or a, 
a responsible authority has an issue with the way that the meeting is dealt with, then that's a separate matter to the meeting in, in terms of it's a procedural issue or it's a, a mistake made by the council. That would be challengeable either through the council's complaint system uh, or by way of a, what's called a judicial review, which is um, basically proceedings that take place where a, a local authority or a, a public body has acted unreasonably. Um, and the test is that it's so unreasonable that a reasonable body wouldn't make that decision. So, but that's a matter for those parties if they wish to go down that route. So I hope all that makes sense and I'll pass back to you. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Mark. Um, for uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Chairman uh, can uh, I just make one observation sir, to you before we do move on to the um, hearing proper? Uh, is that John? Yes, sir. Councillor uh, Pitter. It's, okay. it's just one observation and then I need not refer to it again, but okay. the legal officer referred to the details. I, I wonder if you could ask, sir, for you, if you ask the legal officer, if the postal code as given on the application form was correct, given that the application is in the parish of St Morgan. Um, Do you want me to respond to that, Chairman? Uh, yes, please, Mark, could you respond to that, please? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fitter. I think I think I've I've dealt with the point about the postcode. Um, I, I I I can't answer your question, frankly, but it, it's it to be honest, it if the postcode is incorrect, but the, the property is able to be identified, um, that, that there's no postal address per se for that field. I, I take I, I know that you've raised the point about it being in the wrong parish. Um, but the, if you look at other addresses in that area, I'm advised by licensing who have looked into it, that if you look at other addresses in that area, they, they refer to nuclear as well. So I, I don't really want to, in this meeting, I don't really want to get into a, a discussion about the address because the decision has been made that the address in the application is, is valid. So if you do not agree with that decision, if you do not agree with that decision, then that's so, something that can be dealt with outside of this meeting. Um, but I think for the purposes of this meeting, we have to proceed. The decision's been made that the address is valid, so I think we need to move forward. But there you go. That's that's my address. Okay. General. I think I think that's been pointed out, and we'll have to take it as 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 set out in for the you know for this meeting. That we'll have to leave it at that. Um, before we proceed, somebody um, somebody has got the mic on in the background on a phone or something and I'm we're getting loads of feedback so could everyone Here is Emma Coe. do you want me to mute all the other persons temporarily yeah I'm, get, I'm just getting one somebody else else on a phone or something and get lots of feedback so if you could lovely okay um Emma did we want to um carry on with a minute silence or, or whatever now before we proceed with the meeting I, I think we should chairman yes yeah. and um do you have the paragraph the statement uh or john i have i've been looking for it and i can't find it so yeah, if, chairman I'll, I'll read it out for you yes please, if um, you would, so, please um, so before we start the meeting today i wish to acknowledge that we are in a period of national mourning for his royal highness the duke of edinburgh like others including the chairman of cornwall council we wish to pay tribute to his life of duty and public service and i would therefore like to pause the meeting for a moment of reflection <clears throat> Okay, Chairman, it's Emma Code, Democratic Officer. You're on mute, Chairman. 
sorry, muting myself again. OK, thank you very much, Emma. OK, we will proceed then and I will hand over to Catherine um, to set out the license we will be listening to today, please. Thank you, Chair. Application has been received from Wavelength Media Limited for the grant of a premises license in respect of Leans Field, with reference shown in the report pack, Trevarian Hill, Watergate Bay. Supporting documents and a location map, along with a plan of the intended licensable activities at the premises is attached to Appendix 1. The premises is a field located above Watergate Bay. The application submitted was for an outdoor cinema with a proposed four day annual festival. On the 9th of April, the applicant informed the licensing service that they were cancelling the festival element of the application. So today we're just determining the outdoor cinema. In 2021, the intended operation of the cinema is from the 9th of July through to the 5th of September, operating on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday of each week, weather demand dependent. Parking for the outdoor cinema will be on site. The outdoor cinema has a capacity for up to 300 vehicles with a maximum of 700 persons. <coughs> Details of the requested licensable activities and the timings are shown on pages 4 and 5 of the report pack. Pages 6 to 11 show the proposed conditions. Representations were received from three responsible authorities, Devon and Cornwall Police, see Appendix 2, page 179, Health and Safety, see Appendix 3, page 181, Community Protection, see Appendix 4, page 185. Further representations were received from two other persons, Councillor Fitter, see Appendix 5, page 190, Nuki Town Council, see Appendix 6, page 191. In attendance today are Sue Edwards, representing Devon and Cornwall Police, and Maria Jameson, representing Health and Safety. An agreement was reached between Community Protection and the applicant. The Environmental Health Officer has confirmed if members are minded to grant the outdoor cinema, they're in agreement that only the conditions they propose relating to the application are in agreement that only those referring to the outdoor cinema be conditioned on the licence, as agreed with the applicant. I believe Councillor Fitter is in attendance today with Councillor Stephen Hick representing New Keytown Council. Lynne and Lawrence of Waveland Media are the applicants. Appendix 7 shows a letter of support from a landowner, Mr Pete Cowling. Um, the, the outdoor cinema was held on this land land last year. Members are requested to do determine the application. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kath. Um, Councillors, have you got any uh, questions for the licence officer? No, thank you, Chair. No, thank you, Chair. OK. Um, right, um, Emma, have we got anybody else um, that wishes to be speaking today that's not already on the agenda? Have we got anybody else come in later on or anything? No, it's just, just those on the list, Chairman. Just those on the list. OK, right then. Uh, we'll we'll hand over to the applicant. I don't know whether Lawrence or Lindley is speaking first or both or one after the other, but if um, either of you from um, Wavelength would like to set out your representation, um, please carry on. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so representing, uh, representing Wavelength, as we discussed, as myself, Lindley Lewis and Lawrence, um, I would just like to say a couple of points. Yes, um, as, as, as the business owner, and then I'm going to hand over to Lawrence, who has been assisting us with the licensing process. Um, so I'd just like to put forward a brief summary of our organisation and the event and the application before I hand over to Lawrence to discuss our efforts to achieve the licensing objectives. Um, so as a summary background, Wavelength Media is a Cornish registered business. Our primary function is to publish the world celebrated surf magazine, Wavelength, which has been in print for 40 years. We have a recognised brand, a strong engaged community and have diversified into events in order to be able to operate as a modern day publisher. Last year, we successfully operated a drive-in cinema in the area for six weeks. The event received positive reviews, commendations of good management, provided much needed income to many local service providers and received no complaints. 
Recently, the event was recognized for a Cornish Tourism Award. Moving on to the application herein, originally we had proposed for two events. Firstly, a repeat of the drive-in cinema following the success of 2020. And secondly, the Spring Classic, a three-day celebration of surf culture with live music and overnight camping. Throughout this licensing process, we feel that we have addressed points clearly and succinctly and have produced a high level of management documentation. It has become clear to us that the proposal for the Spring Classic has raised local concerns and following the local feedback, we are happy to withdraw in full our application for the Spring Classic as part of this application. Um, and as Kath mentioned, we notified the Council of the withdrawal in advance of this hearing. As such, we're exclusively proposing for the return of the drive-in cinema, which is designed to provide an enriching attraction to holidaymakers and locals who are already in county. I would also like to add that last year we succeeded in submitting a premises license application for the same event in a neighbouring field. This application still stands, but given the restrictions set by the larger Boardmasters Music Festival, we are not able to operate on this site, hence the requirement for a new application. Given that we were granted a license last year, we feel that our proposal and application is a fair one. As a closing point before I had a hand over to Head of Event Production Lawrence, who will provide a summary of our efforts to achieve the licensing objectives. I would also like to emphasize, emphasize the positive economic impact we anticipate the drive-in cinema will bring to the county. We anticipate circa £200,000 of the expenditure with local suppliers, which will happen both on-site and off-site. We anticipate about £150,000 of on-site trade, including food and drink, predominantly with local suppliers. The proposals would create employment opportunities for local residents and we feel that these figures are not insignificant given the losses that the county has incurred through this COVID crisis. Thank you for your time and consideration and I will now hand over to Lawrence. Brilliant, thanks very much Dinley uh, and thanks to the chair as well and just good morning again to everyone. Um, so my name is Lawrence, I'm the production manager for Wavelength Media Limited and that generally means that I'm responsible for delivering events on the ground. So I'd like to provide some more detail about the sort of headline measures that, that we've got to protect the licensing objectives. I would say though that there is even greater detail in our event management plan risk assessment which was provided as part of the application. So of course we are, we've got a strong commitment um, to these objectives and we want to take a positive approach to achieving the licensing objectives. I've had quite a lot of productive correspondence with some of the responsible authorities over the recent weeks um, and I believe I've resolved for the majority of their concerns, um, some of them formally and some, in, some informally. Um, but nonetheless, just a brief overview based on the licensing objectives as follows. Um, so in terms of prevention of public nuisance, uh, which I'll sort of separate into some subcategories, with regards to noise, um, we have agreed a noise management plan uh, with environmental health. Personally, I think this plan is robust. It goes above and beyond the Noise Council Code of Practice which is an industry standard document that we typically use in the events industry. So we think or we're confident that this noise management plan is going to make the likelihood of any noise complaints extremely low. And in fact, we've committed to the cinema being inaudible at nearby noise sensitive locations, including the adjacent campsite. Just for the interest of the committee, um, how this will be achieved technically is through an FM radio transmission system whereby um, occupants of the event can experience audio from the films via their car stereo transmitted over FM. So it's a distributed speaker system um, and we think that that's going to help us towards uh, the event being inaudible off-site. Um, moving on from noise in terms of waste, and this is a, a, a personal concern of mine, to operate to a really high standard um, an event waste management programme. So we've got an event waste contractor on board, they've got a zero to landfill policy, we will be sorting between recycling and general waste on site. And of course, we're going to be really focusing on making sure no litter uh, is left on the external areas, including the southwest coastal path, the nearby public rights of way. And so we're going to really closely monitor that. Um, but on top of that, you know, knowing our demographic, I really don't think um, litter would be uh, a big problem in that respect. Um, for my final point on nuisance is just to, to briefly touch upon traffic management. Um, so we've done an assessment of the traffic volumes that we might see, and that's in our traffic management plan. We perceive a very mild impact on Trevorian Hill, and we'd like to stress that we don't perceive any impact on the B3276, 
that being the trunk road that services the villages between Port and Treverian. Um, last year, the event was actually held immediately adjacent to the trunk road through 276, and even in the height of a busy tourist season, there weren't any traffic problems. Um, in terms of uh, the, the idea of like a mass exodus after each screening, so around the screenings, we want to build high quality food and drink, some other um, you know, small attractions that are going to reduce the chance of a mass exodus after each screening. Uh, and so that's going to go further to preventing any traffic nuisance on the road. Um, on to the next objective, prevention of crime and disorder. So we've got Coast to Coast Security, who are a reputable local contractor. They're on board with this and they're going to provide security cover. Um, be, be, they'll be briefed to prevent crime and disorder to the extent of the power that any SIA licensed security guard would be able to undertake. Um, with the demographic of this event, I really do perceive the risk of crime and disorder is very low. But of course, we'll take all the necessary steps and we'll be monitoring areas external to the event as well, including the road and the coastal path. Um, moving on to protection of public safety. Um, we are, of course, acutely aware of the southwest coastal path and the fact that it is a hazardous location. There is a history um, of hazards on, along in that area. Um, we, of course, recognise that we need to weigh that public safety against the experience that such a location brings. Um, but in terms of safety on that path, I just want to stress that the cinema it is a drive-in cinema event. Arriving on foot will not be prohibited. Um, this worked well for us in 2020. We didn't receive arrivals on foot, uh, and so we don't anticipate any problems on the surrounding footpaths. Um, in terms of actually enforcing that, so all of our pre-event marketing FAQs, that's going to really drive home that this is a driving style event um, and you know you won't be able to purchase a walk-in ticket for instance. Um, finally protection of children from harm now I don't believe we've received any representations uh, against this so all I'll just say is that our event management plan does contain policies for protection of children um, and so just very briefly chair that I believe covers our headline strategies to the licensing objectives but I will very briefly respond to the point on ecology and that is rare birds and I would just like to reassure the committee um, that we're undertaking a planning application and that we've got a professional planning consultancy on board to go through this including the procurement of ecological assessment and services and so we'll believe that that will be covered off to a high standard going forward and that's everything from me chair thank you okay thank you Lawrence um okay um members are there any questions you wish to ask the applicants Just a brief one, uh, Chair. Yes, John, if carry on. Thank you. So, so you're saying there'll be uh, no pedestrian access or egress from the site, uh, so people can't join a vehicle uh, once they're in there. Is that is that true? You, you, you can only, is, is, that, is that the way it's monitored? Uh, sorry, John, just to clarify your question, you're asking whether there's any pedestrian access or egress from the site. Um, the answer is no, that our policy that is this is a driving event would be arrived at by car. Um, and so we will advertise that in advance in the FAQs on our website and the tickets sold will be attached to a, a vehicle arriving at the event. If there's any further clarification, then please let me know. Thank you. And, and, and if uh, one of the passengers of any car would wish to leave, uh, would that be permissible? I see. So you're talking about a scenario whereby a, a customer has arrived as, say, a group of four in a car, but then wishes to depart early. If yeah. I've understood that correctly, then of course we cannot physically stop them from leaving the venue, as I'm sure everyone in this call agrees. Um, but we would warn them of the route back to Watergate. Um, and of the dangers of leaving on foot um, and it would be discouraged but you know our security team wouldn't have the power to, to physically stop that in the same way that no venue in the country would be able to. That's helpful thank you very much. Thank you John. Okay uh, Sheila did you have some questions I see? Yes, I did, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, gentlemen, for a very good presentation and explaining things really well to me. I, we did have a thing that it said there was going to be a hundred pedestrians, so there's no pedestrians now, it's just ours. Because in uh, fact, it meant... 
So, sorry, thanks for that question. And, and let me just check I've understood correctly. Um, you're asking whether there will be uh, an area at the event that allows people to be seated on the ground in a picnic style. I think this is what you're referring to. And yes, that is still the case. But what, what we're proposing is that if you purchase a ticket for the event that allows you to sit on a picnic blanket, you must still arrive by car but your car is parked in the field in a, in a position further away from the screen. So if you imagine two types of tickets, let's call one the picnic pass. Arrivals for the picnic pass still must arrive by car, but they're parked at the back of the field furthest from the screen, where they're then allowed to proceed on foot to immediately in front of the screen and then sit on the ground. But the main type of ticket is the driving ticket where your car is positioned in where it can, the screen can be viewed from. That that's really that's great. Can I ask one other question? Yeah, you carry on, councillor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you said that last year was very successful. It all went really well. The locations are different now, aren't they, from the location before? Uh, yes, that's absolutely correct. And so, yes, last year's event was a big success but it took place in the field typically used by Boardmasters Festival. Obviously, the reason that that was possible was because the festival wasn't being operated. So with the prospect of Boardmasters returning this year, obviously there's no guarantees, but there is the prospect of it returning, then we have to find a new venue. Um, I, I, I believe it's just short of a mile away by road. OK, thank you. That explains things. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, Chair. Okay, is, is that all, Sheila? Okay, um, I, I've got a question myself. Um, due to the exposed nature of, of the position of the field uh, and the screen and so forth, what um, I'm a bit worried about measures of health and safety um, to uh, to the public due to the size of the screen. Uh, and high winds, etc. So if you could an answer any questions on that, I'd be grateful, please. Yeah, ab absolutely. And it would be my pleasure to and thank you for the question. Um, and of course, it goes back to the overarching point that we need to weigh the amazing location and the beauty of the location with the risks that it presents. And of course, wind management is at the forefront of my mind. Um, I'm, I'm a professional event production manager. And so wind management is a key sort of factor of my day-to-day -day job. So to address the, the screen, um, whilst a, a typical driving cinema, you might find a screen mounted on the back of a lorry, this event would feature a purpose-designed structure that has been designed and built, or designed by a structural engineer and then built by a contractor that is designed specifically to withstand winds of 50 miles an hour with no intervention, and then up to 75 to 80 miles an hour with only very minor intervention. And so the structure will be purpose designed to withstand a significant storm of the same degree that has cancelled Boardmasters or even greater. And it is going to withstand those sorts of winds in a safe way. It's important to note, obviously, that we would likely cancel the event at a threshold lower than 50 miles an hour, but that's merely from a customer enjoyment perspective. So structures themselves specifically designed to withstand the winds that are possible in this area. Um, and then on top of that, there will be a very close uh, monitoring regime that the staff on site will undertake and that the contractors will undertake to ensure that those structures um, comply with their designs, but also comply with all of the measures laid out in uh, the temporary structure guidance from the Institute of Structural Engineers. So this is something I have had quite extensive communication with Cornwall Council of Health and Safety on. Um, and it's my understanding that we've come to an agreement that our measures are suitable, but of course, um, that, that Anne-Marie may wish to, to clarify further on that. OK, thank you. And um, the other uh, question I had about uh, traffic management. I know you were further down the road before a mile or so. Um, th this position is closer to Watergate Bay and there is it is a very narrow road. Um, I'm quite aware of the area myself um, and, and travelled there many times. Uh, and I am worried about the traffic management as, as in coming to and through and your excess and egress points are they wide enough big enough to to um and also get people in off the road so you're not causing disturbance um that's my other concern as well please 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and thank, thanks for that statement. I'm happy to say some more. Uh, so you, you're correct in saying that Treverian Hill is an unclassified road. It doesn't have a centre mark. Um, however, we're in a fair, quite a lucky position that between the event gate and Watergate Bay, the road is predominantly wide enough to pass two vehicles in most places, despite there being a lack of sense mark. Um, with regards to the accesses and egresses from the field, both the gates in question um, are going to have additional um, hardcore hard standing put in. Uh, one of them will be widened um, on the basis that this application is granted. And so both gates will be wide enough such that a vehicle entering the field doesn't need to sort of swing out and cross the opposite oncoming traffic too much. Um, just further to that, um, I would stress that our perception is that there will be no impact on the trunk road, the main road between the villages um, in question. So if anything, that's a superior measure to last year. Um, if there's anything further I can clarify, then please do let me know. OK, thank you. Um, I see uh, Mark, did you have a question? Thank you, Chair. Yeah, it's Mark Andrews, uh, legal advisor. Just a quick question about the event last year. The, you, you mentioned the event last year. Were there any issues or lessons learned from last year? Did you, and did you have any complaints uh, about the event last year that you're aware of? I'm just going to hand you over to Lindley, who's going to respond to that. Hi, Mark. Um, yeah, thanks. So, obviously, lots of lessons learned from a, a you know a season of experience, and we found that actually the, the positive thing about operating um, an event like this was the recurring nature of it. So, on the opening weekend, we obviously just had five days until the following weekend. So, we, as far as the seamless operation went, we were able to improve constantly over the over the over the event series. Um, with regards to complaints, um, nothing. We, the only reason that we ever received a complaint from any customer was just in relation, to, you know, weather issues that we had to um, deal with on the ground, um, which might have meant the delaying of a screening. So, as you all know the sites well, we you know, the, we're exposed to fog up there. We're exposed to wind. We had to cancel three evenings due to high wind. Um, we had to cancel two nights due to fog. So the communication between the organisation and the customers was it was a good lesson out there. So we feel that that was a positive experience moving into this year. Um, with regard to complaints, um, we didn't receive any specific complaints. Um, we did check with the Cornwall Council through the process. They received feedback after the opening weekend. Um, the questions are social distancing measures. And obviously the, the COVID um, pandemic was rife and the event areas were just reopening up. So in response to that, we made sure that we opened up a second um, area for, for people to get into, which allowed people more space. Um, and then following from that, we, we didn't receive any other feedback. And the general, the, re the reviews that we received from our customers, um, you know, was, was very positive. And Mark, so Lawrence here again, and just to touch back on your point of um, traffic management, I just want to stress that, you know, the, the occupancy in terms of cars may be up to 300 vehicles per screening, but this is not just, um, well, there's a strategy to sort of spread out these arrivals. And as soon as we're at a stage where arrivals and departures are spread across one to two hours, as opposed to 15 minutes, then suddenly the volume of of traffic on Traverian Hill actually gets very low and there's some mathematical there's a mathematical model in the traffic management plan that gives more detail there obviously it's only an estimate but with the high quality food and drink available with beautiful location we really don't anticipate 250 cars trying to depart in 15 minutes at the end of screening and that certainly wasn't the case last year We've also got the advantage of having two gates to the field, so we can have one entrance and one exit. So we've, we've sort of got an internal one-way system, and that's going to have natural benefits to the traffic on the road. It's not something we had access to last year. So if anything, I would say it will, we'll be in a better position. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. OK. Um, councillors, was there any other questions we asked you wanted to ask before we proceed? No, thank you, Fine, Chair. Thank you. 
Okay, right. Uh, right, okay, we'll uh, proceed on to representat representations from uh, members of council. Um, so we'll hand it over to um, Anne-Marie first, I believe. Is that correct? Hi, oh, Joe, it's Mark from Legal. Yep. She might need to press, I think it's star six. Emma will be able to clarify that. But if she's been muted, she might need to press star oh, six. Okay. Thanks. And if she's not there for a second, maybe go on to Sue Edwards from the police. Yeah, okay. We'll um, she can come back to Anne Marie if she's still all there. All right. Okay. We'll, we'll hand over to Sue then. Are you there, Sue? Sorry, it took a while to say I was no longer muted. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I am here. Um, I just I've only joined the hearing really um, in case you had any questions. The as the festival part of it has been uh, withdrawn. Those were our only concerns. Uh, we have no concerns with the cinema aspect. As the applicant has said, they ran some last year and I've actually because of COVID had a lot of uh, outdoor cinemas in my area and they have created no crime and disorder for the police. Oh, so, so, so as far as you're concerned, um, you're happy with it at the moment then? Yes, and, and um, I, I just assume, um, maybe Mark might be able to clarify this, that all mention of the, of the festival aspect will be removed from the application when said license is, if you deem fit to, um, to grant a license, all wording regarding festival be removed. Okay, uh, we, we 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 will make sure that is done. Sue, um, did um, did either of the councillors have any questions for Sue Edwards while we're here, or are we happy? Chair, no, can I sure. please? Yeah. Councillor Lennox Boyd, can I yes. ask Sue? Yes. Carry on, Sheila. In the representation from the police, it mentions your your concerns regarding the um, the boundary fence. I'd just be in four foot. Um, yes, that was to do with the festival, really. We, when we when we had oh. the music festival up there, we were we were concerned about uh, you know the, <laughs> the the cliff edge and the boundary, etc. But but not that that concern isn't in place for a drive-in cinema. That was for the festival. That's, that answers my question. Thank you very much, Sue. Okay, uh, um, John, did you have a question? No, thank you, Chair. Okay. okay. Uh, 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 Mark, uh, you still got your hand up. Did you have a question for Sue? Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, Mark from Legal. Um, hi, Sue. The, the conditions that you originally agreed, I understand you agreed some conditions. Are you withdrawing those conditions? As long as, 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 long as the festival part yeah. is withdrawn, then those, those okay. conditions are withdrawn, Mark. So those conditions were only in relation to the festival aspect of the application. Yeah, we never we right. never had any concerns with the cinema. It was just the festival aspect we wanted to improve on conditions. OK, and just just a point there, Chairman, that Sue said about the um, the removal of that aspect of it. Um, clearly, even if the applicant were still applying for the uh, festival aspect, then members could um, refuse that part and grant the cinema part or vice versa. So um, there's no issue with doing that. But I just wanted clarification on the conditions just to make sure that they were um, removed. But that, that's been clarified. So thank you. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Uh, um, thank you, Sue. Uh, to the point, as always. Thank um, you. And we'll hopefully um, hand, uh, if there's no more questions for Sue, we'll hopefully hand over to Anne-Marie if she is available. We'll try again. Oh. Try again. Can you hear me this time? Yes, we can hear you again. Ah, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, apologies for that. We're having a few technical difficulties with the telephone there. Um, right. OK, so I have had extensive communications uh, with the event management team in relation to obviously the festival that's not now happening, um, but also in relation to the cinema screening, which we're here to discuss today. Um, Initially, I put a representation in because, uh, like what's already been discussed on this call, I was concerned about the high exposed nature um, of the event site, obviously being very near to a cliff edge, mm -hmm. and how much these structures would withstand any wind damage um, and inclement weather that would obviously hit being in such an exposed location. Um, 
this since um, obviously putting representation in, like I said, we, we've had a lot of discussion and we've looked at a lot of the different measures that would need to be in place. Um, and the event organisers have actually um, come back with everything that I would ask them for on that. So they've reassured me in relation to the structure that they will follow all of the um, temporary demand support structure guidance um, and that everything will withstand up to 50 mile an hour and that they have got emergency procedures in place within their event management plan so that if there is inclement weather um, that they can stop the showing or prevent it from going ahead and things like that. Um, other issues that I did have as well were in relation to obviously with up to 200, 300 cars per showing um, looking at internal pickup and drop off points um, and whether the access and egress points would need to be amended to ensure that suitable and sufficient um, access so that vehicles didn't become stuck um, or slip, which would then obviously cause a hazard to any pedestrians and employees um, or cause a backlog on the highway. Um, again, on discussions with, with the organisers, they've discussed whether they're going to put uh, temporary tracking in, some permanent hard standings on entries, widening the gateways, etc. So I don't believe this is now any longer an issue. Um, and then finally, the other point that, that obviously I raised was in relation to which, which the organiser already said about pedestrians arriving on foot. Um, obviously, in the original application, there was talk that there could be a potential for this and that there would be designated walkways um, that would have been allocated. Um, at the time, I had big, big reservations in relation to that, particularly with the second show in the film, which would be late at night and alcohol on site and obviously a cliff path very nearby. Um, Obviously, on, on discussions, the organisers have now retracted that and have said that actually they are not going to permit any um, pedestrian access at all. They have to now come in vehicles, um, which completely negates that risk. So from the representation that I put in, we have reached an agreement. Um, I'm very happy with the agreement that we reached um, and the event management plan reflects those changes. Um, so I'm happy, but I wanted to be on this call today just in case there's any questions that anybody wanted to put to me. That's me, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Anne Marie. Um, I'll, uh, I'll hand over to councillors now for questions. Uh, I'll put Sheila first. Did you have a question? Yes, I do, Chair. Thank you, and thank you very much, Sue. Um, it mentioned now that there's no pedestrian access, we haven't got to worry about any illuminated pathways. My only other concern would be if you know they have a lot of rain and the and the field gets very very wet and soft. Would there be ways of being able to get the um, cars out? Like, would there be a tractor or anything like that being able to be sort of accessed if any cars get stuck or we have any issues with the weather? My communications with event organisers, um, they, they've put an action plan in place, obviously, for if they need to remove any cars um, off of the site. But uh, they are going to, if, if Obviously, they'll know throughout the festival site what the state of the actual field is becoming and if they yeah. need to put any temporary trackway in. Apparently, they've got temporary trackway available. That they can put in at very, very short notice. Um, so I didn't have any further concerns in relation to that. And they are going to have a drop-off um, point and pick-up point. So literally, um, people can can go in and out straight, straight to a one-way system. So it will save the, the backlog onto the highway and any issues of that that causes. Thank, thank you very much, Sue. That answers my concerns. Thank you. Uh, uh, John, did you have a question? Uh, 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 Council Lannis Boyd preempted my question, so thank you very much. <laughs> very much. Okay. Okay. And uh, Mark, um, did you have a question? Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, just a point of clarification for, um, for Anne Marie, if I may, Chairman. Um, yeah, so I, I asked Sue whether on the basis of the uh, changes she was withdrawing her suggested conditions and I would just ask you the same question. I know in your representation you don't actually suggest conditions, you just obviously set out your concerns and you've referred to what the applicant has agreed with you. Are you satisfied that what they've agreed deals with your concerns and you don't need conditions to be attached in, the, in, in relation to those points? No, I'm very happy. Um, there was with the, the issues that I have, they've managed to rectify um, and put remedial action in place for all of the concerns that I had. Um, I will be undertaking, um, as with any event in the county, I will be undertaking as part of my health and safety enforcement role, um, some random visits at the site. 
Um, so if there was any particular issues, then I would obviously take necessary enforcement action at that. But to be honest, there's nothing that I can foresee that's an issue here that I would need to put a condition on the licence for. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. OK, oh, we're all happy with that. OK, uh, thank you, Anne-Marie, um, for that. Uh, we will now move on to um, external responsible authorities. So in my mind, I think the first person we will ask to speak um, would be um, Newquay Town Council then please. If they're not available, we'll we'll move over to um, John Fair. Chairman, it's Emma Code, Democratic yep. Officer. Um, I, the representative from Newquay Town Council is on the call. If his telephone yep. is muted, if you could press star six to unmute. Yeah, I, I have pressed star six to unmute, but it takes it takes about 10 seconds to unmute. So we always get the advice to unmute as we're unmuting, <laughs> but I am here. OK. Um, if you'd like to um, carry on then, please, Councillor. Yes, thank you, Chair. Good morning, panel. Uh, I'm here as the uh, Chair and Representative of Newquay Town Council's Planning and Licensing Committee, and obviously representing the committee, I'm, I'm unable to really kind of modify any representation in light of things that have been said currently at the meeting. Um, we have listed our concerns in our written representation, and we believe the licence, if granted, will have a significant impact on, on the residents of Newquay. Um, I respectfully draw your attention to our written representation and particular to the following points. Uh, bearing in mind solicitor's advice regarding um, rare birds, I'm, I am continuing to include this section as we do argue that the granting of the premises licence will cause a public nuisance to those visiting or residing in the area to enjoy and work with the pres very presence of rare species. So it should be noted that those rare species are there um, and that you know people do visit and, and reside in it and work in the area specifically because those rare species are there. So, um, and the application site is immediately adjacent to the set aside fields provided to protect in particular corn buntings and the skylarks, which are both birds of conservation concern for red list species. Um, uh, we also believe that the premises would have an adverse effect upon the settlements of Watergate Bay and Tregarian in terms of traffic and disruption. And uh, an addition of the es estimated eight vehicles per hour onto rural roads already coping with increased summer traffic will have a measurable impact on communities already under pressure during the high season, especially considering the widely expected increase in visitor numbers, while overseas travel remains restricted and uncertain. It is likely that the application for the cinema could mean that all the potential 300 attending vehicles arrive in a short space of time, especially if those vehicles are, um, as the applicant says, visitors to the area and, and make a similar decisions on how, how long it will take them to arrive at the site. Uh, we feel that the resultant noise pollution and disturbance caused by the site and the premises will cause a nuisance to the residents and businesses of Watergate Bay, Tregarian and Whipsidary. Um, and those arriving to sit outside, although um, will require outside audio or loud audio from their vehicle FM receivers, um, which was stated as a mitigation by the applicant. The applicant has mentioned part of the planning process as um, environmental mitigation. Um, so we would ask that you ask if any business activities will be carried out prior to the decision on planning consent. Um, given that visitors will be allowed out of their vehicles, we are still concerned that there is just a small fence before visitors who may be unfamiliar to the area are presented with the coast path and cliff edge. Coast path, sorry, and cliff edge. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. OK, thank you. Um, councillors, I'll, I'll, I'll hand over to uh, Sheila first if she's got any questions. Thank you, Dad, and thank you. Could I ask what the vote was like regarding um, when it comes to town council? Was it unanimous or was it sort of well, well sort of split? Could you <coughs> or would you remember that how the voting went with the town council? Um, if you just bear with me a second, I will find out exactly that information for you. I've got it to hand here, and like most things, you um, yeah, it was resolved unanimously to object. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, John, did you have any questions? Um, uh, just about the concern of, of the timing of, of the, the, the information and, and the licensing announcement. Uh, were you concerned about um, a, a lack of communication? Because I think our legal advisor, Mark Andrew, is saying it was through the normal procedure. Um, but were you given enough notice as a town council to be able to to come to a decision? 
Uh, we were indeed, yeah. We, we, we came to a decision in, in good time. We, we did have an issue with the original scheduled date of the meeting because um, we weren't issued formal notification of that. So we, we asked the meeting to defer and it was deferred to today's date. So that rectified any concern with that. OK, thank you. OK, um, if there's no other questions, Mark, did you have anything or are you OK? No questions, thank you, Chair. OK. Um, I, I, the questions I was to answer have been answered already, so I will move on to um, who else have we got now? Oh, Councillor Fretter, we can't forget you. Chairman, it's Emma Code again. Yeah. Uh, just to say if Councillor Fitter is, he is on the line, if he could press star six to unmute. Star six, yeah. <laughs> OK. Are you with us, John? Can you hear me, Mr Chairman? You're a bit quiet. If you could get a bit closer to the mic or whatever, Simply, or your phone. Yeah, yeah um, now can you hear me, sir? Yes, we're not used to you being quiet, John, so, you know. Well, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Um, Chairman. I, I just hope my battery on my phone doesn't go. That's all. Um, look, yeah, um, with your permission, sir, uh, and I, I'm not quite sure if I'm allowed to, but am I, in, am I allowed to make two, uh, a couple of observations about the presentation thus far to correct what I would consider to be inaccuracies? Uh, I think you're quite you're within your rights to do so, yes, John. If not, I'm sure Mark will... Uh, which will come in and let us know if that's not the case. OK, thank you. Very much. It, it's just small technical points, really. Uh, and it was the officer when making the introduction um, referred to a appendix 4.1 on page 193. Um, and the, it was from uh, Mr. Pete Cowling, um, just to sort of say she said he was the landowner. Um, just for clarification, Mr. Pete Cowling is not the landowner of this particular site. Um, he, he leases it, um, but it's, it, it is owned by a Mr. Lean, who is the landowner. Hence the fact um, they've adopted the name, the applicant's Lean's Field. So I just wanted to correct that small point, um, if I may. And the second thing was just so that we understand entirely the location, sir, because I'm not quite sure if everyone one does understand the location. And that is that this is this is north of Watergate Bay itself, the centre of Watergate Bay, it's north. So in actual fact, last year's event was south of Watergate Bay. It was on the part of the site of the Boardmasters. So of course, in actual fact, um, it had very little, it had minimal impact upon Trevarian and Chigurian because it was, um, they are all north of the bay. So um, the cars exited out onto the 3276. So there was certainly, and I'm aware of it because the local member, there was no traffic problems last year with traffic exiting the site because um, it's a wide road and they filtered out no problem. We don't have the same luxury, unfortunately, up at Trevarian. And so that is it. And my last point is just so that um, unless, I'm sp unless I missed it entirely, on page 176, and 175, and I believe also on 177, um, there's three illustrated maps. Um, these illustrated maps, in actual fact, do not indicate to me, unless I've got it wrong, the actual um, positioning and the site for the cinema. These, apt these refer to the Wave Lake Spring Classic. Each one in the corner says the Wave Lake Spring Classic. So if we refer to a page 175, we've got the main stage, the audience area. We've got 176, the main stage audience. So um, uh, I, I would submit, and this is something which I, I may feel obliged to take up a democratic service afterwards, that I believe that we, we do lack some important information as to where the cinema screen is actually going to be positioned. But if I can now turn, sir, to my um, objections with your permission, if I may, and um, I will try to be as brief as possible. Um, if we take the um, public safety, and um, I am concerned that the um, police, Sue Edwards, has decided to remove um, the, her condition, um, her concerns over the fence 
um, she says, and I quote the word, having viewed this fence, it's not considered sufficient to prevent entry. It's approximately only four feet high, and even with raised a wire along the top of the wire, the public tent can access the site. Well, I know the area very well. I, I walk the path probably three or four times a week. And certainly, without any protection there, anybody coming off the footpath can access the site. So why ever the license that Sue Edwards has decided that it's quite all right for up to sort of 600 people, be they arriving by car, who may, some of them may decide to depart, and indeed people on the coastal footpath who may decide to make an entry. So I, I would have thought in actual fact, from public safety, this event in actual fact does present dangers to public safety for the, um, the, the people who may be tempting to leave other than by the car they arrived in, or indeed the public safety of people who may to be tempted to attempt to climb in from the cliff path to see what's going on. I think there is danger to public safety there, and I think this is a, um, an admission by the police and something that I um, regret very much indeed. The prevention of crime and disorder. Um, this site, in actual fact, is across the road. It's at the top of the hill, um, the field locations, top of the hill in the parish of St Morgan. And indeed, I make it clear um, for um, my colleague from Newquay Town Council has spoken. Unfortunately, if St Morgan Parish Council had had the same information, they would have been here and they're sharing entirely all my ruse because it is in their parish that this event is taken. But if I can talk about the prevention of crime and disorder, across the road is a large camping site. And most of the camping is actually camping there. There's not caravans. Um, this end of the field, which is the field, they, they have the tents coming down to this area. And yet we are, uh, 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 we're made to believe that there will be no dis disturbance to their peace and tranquility. When 100, 200, 300 cars or how many cars or 400 or 300 or 500 people are leaving or arriving, and their peace and tranquility will not be disturbed. I, I, it just doesn't stack up at all, Mr Chairman. Not one way. This is a rural location and their peace and disturbance. And so in actual fact, I, I would suggest in actual fact that, that um, there is a grave danger uh, of, a, of a public nuisance to these people who would have come on holiday expecting to have camping. They, they chose this location because it's a rural location. It is totally rural location. You know, they, they want to be out in this field, this extension field, because it's further away from the clubhouse of the tent, which is further up the road and inland. So, so I do believe there is, a, a, you know, a massive uh, danger of, of public nuisance. The protection of children from harm. I, I do believe, in actual fact, that, that there is going to be, um, however good the operators are, and I don't in any way dispute the efficiency of the operators, and, and they are responsible people, and they wouldn't dream of doing anything that would intentionally cause harm to children. But I, I just cannot believe that we can control license activities to the extent that will prevent and indeed allow children to be harmed. You know, the, the parents, there is going to be a bar facility, etc. So the children perhaps will remain in the car waiting for the film to start. You know, who is supervising these children in the cars while they're waiting for the film to start? Who, who, is, who is making sure that we don't have people with ulterior motives walking around and opening doors of cars to see who's inside and a young child is inside where our parents have gone to get drinks from the bar? No, I, I, I'm sorry. This is a recipe for an actual fact do it present in a danger to children. So I, I, I do believe that there is that this has not been identified enough and has not been addressed in that manner. I am. Um, I, I take the highways issues, um, which it, which is um, part of the um, license objecting so much as because it's public safety again. And quite frankly, this road, the the, the 392, um, I think the number is not the 392, it's the 3276 rather, is at the bottom of the road. This is an unclassified road that leads down to the road junction at the bottom. The traffic coming down this road have to give away to the traffic on the 3276. Now if you've got, and the 3276 is the road to the airport, so at certain times of the day it is a very 
busy section of road. It leads out of Newquay, down to Watergate Bay, and then up through the village of Tregarian. And quite frankly, um, sometimes it's, it, it is very busy road. And so suddenly, you've got a number of cars, when they're leaving this event in the daytime, there's going to be two hearings. When they're leaving this event today, they're going to be backed up Trevarian Hill, right the way up Trevarian Hill, because they will have, they'll not be able to pull out until they have a break in the traffic on the 3276 right down the bottom of the bay. And if you look at your maps, you will see what, where I mean at the bottom of the bay. Um, I think one of the maps, does one of them show it clearly? No, it does in a natural fact because all we've got there is um, we, we don't actually go down. We've got the Watergate Bay Hotel, but it doesn't actually show the road junction at the bottom. So, um, we, we, you know, we, and the danger is, is that traffic then, I fear, will attempt to turn up Boundary Road to take a shortcut out to access the B3276. And Boundary Road on the map 177, page 177, Boundary Road is the road that is on the, uh, on the right-hand side of the Trevarian Hill Road. It's at the bottom. It's, the site itself is above a road that leads off in an if easterly direction. I think members can see it there. And that is called Boundary Road because that is the boundary. And it runs in a straight line all the way up to the cliff between the parish of St Morgan and the parish of Newquay. This boundary road will take you up to the 3276. Three, three, and I'm afraid that cars leaving, they will choke up coming down this hill and they'll attempt. So once again, this is going to cause massive problems, absolutely massive problems. And um, I, I, I think this is another reason why this application should be um, uh, um, uh, refused. Um, you know, there is no boxes in the license objectives that really allow you to tick it as being okay. As I say, they made much of last year, and certainly as a local member, I had no complaints received to me about last year, no complaints at all. But it was in a different location. And I would not be here today, sir, taking your time if it was in that location this time. And I would suggest possibly the boardmasters, in actual fact, is only a four day event. And they have, I believe, uh, 10 days for setting up and 10 days for not setting up. And perhaps the answer is, is that the applicants um, resubmit um, to that site. Uh, and purely and simply, while the boardmasters are on, don't have a cinema, you know, but um, to, to relocate across the valley to the absolute horror of the people of Jagurin, I've had numerous emails stuck to them. I've had the parish council tearing their hairs out. Trevarian, total fear, because they think, what's going to happen? You know, suddenly the peace and tranquility is going to be disturbed, and it will be disturbed by these number of cars. I've taken enough of your time, Mr. Chairman. I thank you very much indeed, sir, you and your colleagues for listening to me. It's very strange that we are not talking over Zoom, but that's another decision taken by those who, of which I have no input on. So I will take any questions, sir, with your permission, if your colleagues wish to ask me any. Thank you, Okay, sir. thank you, John. Um, uh, I'll hand over to Sheila. Did you have any, for, any questions for John? Yeah, good, good morning, Councillor Fed. It's lovely to hear from you. To hear good morning, from you. Madam. Um, Morning, sir. The, the fact that it's now going to be like a one way uh, in and out to the field, would, would that alleviate the problems? No, I, I, it, it, it won't. It, it, it won't. I, I'm, I, I don't, I mean to say, I, I'm not quite sure which, if you say in and out, if you're saying that the organiser intend to tell the traffic to turn either one way or the other, it would be just as bad because if they come out and are told to turn left, they actually have to come up to the road junction at Trevarian, which then joins the B3276. So you will have the, you will have just as much chaos there. If they're turn, told to turn right when coming out of the site, they will go down into Watergate Bay and they will back up Trevarian Hill. Trevarian Hill is dangerous at the best of time. This length of road, I can't emphasize enough to you, um, um, Councillor, this length of road is, in, uh, as the applicant query, clearly pointed out in some places you can't have two vehicles passing no one walks this road it is far too dangerous everyone walks the coastal footpath you wouldn't dream of walking down this hill unless you unless you want to sort of 
um, risk being scat over, so to speak. So, no, um, the traffic arrangements, however they try, and I'm not suggesting for one moment they're not trying, they're, it is not a suitable location traffic-wise. And um, uh, I, I know that my concerns are shared with, by Councillor Brown, the Cabinet member for um, Transport, who um, rather been... Sorry, Chairman, it's Mark from Legal here. We haven't had a representation from Councillor Brown, so Councillor Fitter knows knows how these meetings work. So okay. uh, we'll just caution Councillor Fitter on that. Thank you. We'll, yes. we'll, have, to leave, we'll have to leave that reference, John. Yes, we'll delete that reference. Indeed, we'll delete any <laughs> reference from Councillor Brown. Please, members, strike it out of your memory. I think that's what the judge normally says, isn't it, when he does um, do a rule. So I do apologise. I wasn't attempting to take advantage and, at all, and I do apologise for that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Martin, you do you have any questions? Thank you, Chair. Only, only a point to say that there are page 75 and 76, uh, Councillor Fitter, we've got a good representation of the cinema layout in the fields. Um, uh, and uh, if, if there was uh, methods of managing the, the exiting of, of traffic in, in phases, if there were proper stewardship of the exit um, to relieve that log jam which you uh, predict um, would that ease ease your mind a little um, if, thank you very much and that's a very correct and, uh, and pertinent question of course that is one of my concerns it's one of the concerns of, of, of Nuki Town Council I believe they mentioned highways um, yes it's one of my concerns and it certainly would but unfortunately sir it will not address the overall concerns regarding the location and the close proximity of the campsite that is next door it's in the field where they've got vehicle access at the top where it's got I'm looking at the page 176 where we've got a public footpath at the, that crosses over I think it says public path unmarked it's a public footpath that access that to the cliff and and the, in the field to the where it says park and 200 square meter 20,000 square meters that is a campsite that is where the tents all go in and so it, it, I, I'm you know traffic noise at night you know car headlights and everything this will disturb their peace and so, um, whilst you, if they had a gold-plated traffic exit plan, it may well help to address my thing. I, I don't think you'll be able to solve it because volume of traffic, um, it, it's rather like trying to put a quart into a pint pot at certain times. It just, however much you try, it ain't going to work. But certainly it would, it, it would help to address my concerns, but the overall concerns of the of public safety, the prevention of public nuisance, the public that those things still are there, sir. And um, however much I may, and you know, those people who know me know, in actual fact, that I I, I am pro development. I am very supportive of development. Should have been, you know, I I I I, I accept the boardmasters uh, um, event, um, and it's now controlled. It is now controlled, uh, and and it's managed in a professional way. This event, these people who held it across the valley last time, it was a professional event, and it was okay. But this location, given there was no caravan camping sites in the last location, you only had the airfield at the back of you. You weren't disturbing anybody. There was no sheep even, you know, sort of thing. Um, the Watergate Bay Hotel was down the bottom. So, you know, there was no disturbance. It was a perfect site. But this is not a perfect site. It's too near Trevarian. It's too near Trigarian. I, I, You know, and so if the traffic controls were gold-plated to the extent that there was, and I don't think they can be, however hard they try, I don't think they can be, sir. But if they were, I still regretfully would have to say my objections remain because my objections are the peace and tranquility and the threat to public safety the prevention of a public nuisance and crime and disorder still remain i'm afraid thank you councillor that's very clear thank you very much uh, thank you, sir. mark did you have a question for councillor fair uh just a point of clarification really chairman because um obviously this is a public meeting i think it's important to, to state that um Councillor Fitter obviously referred to the campsite next door um, not being happy and Watergate Bay Hotel might not be happy and local residents weren't happy but 
we haven't we haven't had any representations from any of those parties so unfortunately we you know that's that can't be a consideration if there's no representations then um then there's no representation so as far as the application goes that means that there's no representations from the campsite so the representations from the campsite that don't exist can't be taken into account by this subcommittee i'm afraid so um i just wanted to make that point like i say as it's a public meeting i think it needs clarifying thank you Okay. Yes, um, could I come back in, Mr. Chairman, to correct your legal officer? I did not say anything about representations and, and not affecting the Watergate Bay Hotel. Not affect. I did not say anything about the Watergate Bay Hotel. It, they, I've had no conversation with the Watergate Bay Hotel. I just merely said the site across on the southern side was ideal. No one was affected, not even the Watergate Bay, which is down the bottom. I wasn't referring to this particular event not affecting the Watergate Bay. So if the legal officer could just refresh his memory and come back to confirm, I did not say that. OK, I'm, I'm happy to um, to confirm that I obviously, I obviously misheard what Councillor Pitter said, so I apologise for that. But the point, remains, the, and, the point <laughs> remains in relation to the campsite that we've had no and, representations from the campsite. I, no. I, and could I just come back to say that I'm not representing the campsite owners. I am representing the people who will be staying in that campsite. It is a campsite. It is licensed and it's full for this coming summer. I'm not representing the campsite owners. As a councillor, I represent anybody who stays in my division, uh, Mark. And so I'm representing the quality of life for those people to enjoy their holiday. I couldn't care tub de beef if the campsite owner is in favour of it or not in favour of it. I'm not worried about that, sir. I'm worried about the peace and tranquility and the quality of the holiday of those people staying in that site, which will be affected. And I have that right and I'm allowed to have that right because they will be in my division. And as such, I as will be their de facto representative. Thank you, sir. And, and, and I, would, I would just come back on that and say that some some people staying in that campsite may well find the uh, outdoor cinema to be an, an annoyance or uh, a nuisance and some may decide to visit the cinema themselves and, and it's difficult to say what all the people staying at the campsite would would like or wouldn't like but obviously yep. the campsite owner the point I was making was that the campsite was referred to I take the point that Councillor Fit is making but he he can't and and councillor fit will know this he, he can't <laughs> say he's speaking on behalf of all the people that are going to stay on the campsite because you, well you just can't they, they no. you know I, I, the way the licensing act works is that if they want if i booked a holiday to that campsite and i saw this application it's unlikely if i live away from cornwall but i might do i might keep my eye on things then i could have made a representation if i was living in scotland um if i was coming down on holiday i could have said I'm concerned because I think it will be a public nuisance when I'm on holiday. But um, yeah, so I'm, I'm not trying to be difficult or find fault. But because this is a public meeting, I just I'm just offering clarification for the purposes of being public. I'm not arguing with Councillor Fitter in any way. He's perfectly entitled to make the points he wants to make. And I'm not suggesting otherwise. I'm just trying to be fair to everyone. Um, the people objecting and the people applying for the license. So. Um, yeah. OK, um, I think that's covered everything. Um, and if you're happy with that, John, I'm happy with that. So we'll move on. Um, Emma, I, have we got any uh, more speakers that we we that no, just speak? I don't know. I've gone no. through my list. So yeah. that's it. Um, OK, uh, we didn't. I don't think there's any more questions that we wish to ask John. Nobody's put their hands up or anything in the box so we'll move on to um final submission from the applicant if i am correct i haven't missed anybody out have i emma uh, chairman um point 17 on the procedures the chairman and members can ask further questions of all parties now before we move uh, on right, I yes all right so i had missed something out good good job you're on on there um okay uh councillors is there any more questions you wish to ask before we have the applicant back to sum up for anyone? I, I, John I'm, or Sheila? Yeah. I'm OK, Chair. Thank you very much. John, any questions? Chair, yeah, could I ask the applicant one um, that they, if they were able to 
consider further measures to manage traffic. Um, maybe they could they could mention it in their summing up. Thank you. OK, fine. Um, right, well, we'll ha hand back to Lawrence and uh, Lindley um, from Wavelength. I don't know w which of them wishes to speak first and um, we'll hand back to you, give you a few seconds to come back into the call. Star six, remember. <laughs> hi, hi, hi there, everybody. Yeah, and thank you. And sorry, we were just taking time to unmute ourselves. There. Uh, that's and, fine. Carry on. And so, thanks everybody for the statements you've made. And, and I'll pass over to Lindley um, in a second. But on a general level, I would just like to stress that it's very important to us to run this event to a high standard. And whilst we've got plans in place, these would be continually monitored throughout the proposed run and that goes back to traffic as well. On a few um, technical points that I hope might provide some reassurance, um, it is worth noting that being open Thursday to Sunday, we wouldn't expect to necessarily be at capacity every night. And some nights it might be very quiet. Um, I'd also like to clarify that um, this may not have been immediately obvious in the drawing in the plans, but we would propose that our cars exit by the southern gate from um, from the cinema field. So that is just to be 100% clear, entering by the north gate adjacent to the campsite, but exiting by the southern gate. So that immediately takes away that sort of 11 p.m. Um, engine noise and headlight concern. Um, hope, hopefully, hopefully that makes sense and is, is clear to, to everyone on the call. Um, just a further point, we obviously recognise the location of the campsite, um, but just would like to clarify that only a very small number of pitches are within immediate view of the road and those pitches are next to an active road at, at any time whether the cinema is indeed there or not and finally on the exiting traffic someone did mention the possibility of holding traffic back as it were to reduce the load now our first you know our overarching strategy is to sort of encourage our customers to trickle out rather than a mass exodus. And the, the main way to do that is to offer them enjoyable things to do around the cinema. So food, drink, the wonderful view, etc. But just to be 100% clear, our internal traffic management team, they can hold traffic on exit. So if they can see there is non-event traffic coming down the road, for instance, from the surrounding villages, then they can absolutely hold our cars within the field to allow that traffic to pass. And so the, the people we have working on site, they will take an active role in the traffic management and we will take responsibility for it and sort of iteratively improve, improve it when, where necessary. Um, so I hope that's some reassurance. I'll just briefly pass over to Lindley for a closing statement as well. Hello, everybody. Um, and thank you, Jan, for the opportunity to speak and, and thank you, everybody else within the meeting for your input. Um, I think for as far as our application goes, um, all the points that we've managed to get across, I think we've, we've managed to get across clearly. We've heard of the objectives and um, feel that our application um, remains in a, a strong position and feel that we have done our best part to reach conclusion with all the representations um, where possible. Um, and within the licensing objective. So I'd like to thank you all for the opportunity to, to speak today um, and wish you, and, and then I have no other statement to make from here. Um, okay, is, is, uh, have you finished summing up, um, gentlemen? Uh, yes, Chair, that's correct. That's our sum up, and thanks again. Okay. Um, uh, Sheila, did you have any um, last questions? No, I'm fine. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, everybody. Uh, OK, John, did you have any last questions? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. OK, and Mark, was there anything you wish to um, quantify before we move on? No, thank you, Chairman. OK. Um, well, at this point in the meeting, um, we will go off and make a decision on this application today and we'll come out of um, have, uh, have the meeting and leave and, and go on so forth. Um, there is a, normally a statement we read out at this point in time, and I don't know if Emma could um, 
do that for us, if that's possible? Yes, Chairman, I'll read the paragraph and then I'll ask for a proposer and seconder to exclude the press and public. Thank you. Resolve very much. that under section 100A4 of the Local Government Act 1972 as amended, the public be excluded from the meeting for the following item of business on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph 5 information in respect of which any claim to legal professional privilege could be maintained in legal proceedings and that proceedings apart from the resolution passed shall remain confidential. Could I ask for a proposer please? I shall Councilor propose. Lester. Okay, I'm quite uh, happy to second. Thank you. Councilor. Okay, can I, I'll do a roll call vote. Could you where, indicate whether you're for or against or abstaining? Councillor Luke? Or. Councillor Lennox Boyd? Or. Councillor Martin. Four. OK, thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that it has been carried that we exclude the press and public. Therefore, could I ask anybody on the call who isn't a committee member to leave the meeting um, and that the live stream will be paused and that an announcement will be made when the live stream commences and the decision announced? Yeah, I, I will just say before we go that we're probably going to be about at least half an hour um deciding this um before we come back on just to give you fair warning um and and then we'll we be back but we're going to be at least half an hour deciding this okay yeah. Chairman and Senator Co, just before we pause the live stream, if I could just say that we, the, the people who are actually on the call will need to watch on the live stream for the decision. They won't be called back into the meeting. OK, fine. Right. Um, we'll proceed onwards then. Uh, Chairman, I'll confirm once the live stream has been paused, so if we could just hold any conversation for a moment. OK, thank you.
What time are we starting this afternoon? Oh, two o'clock. All right, yeah. One forty-five. Uh, Chairman, it's Emma Co, Democratic Officer. I can confirm that the live stream has now recommenced. Therefore, could I ask for a proposer and a seconder to go back into public session? Uh, I shall propose we go back into public session. A I'll second. second that if, if you wish. Thank you. Thank you. I'll do a roll call. Could you all confirm whether you're for or against or abstaining? Councillor Luke? Uh, four. Councillor Martin? Four. Councillor Lennox Boyd? Four. Thank you. Chairman, you can proceed now. OK, um, good afternoon, everyone. We've now re-entered public session or the licensing session. Uh, we want to push. Um, I hope everyone is with us and can hear us now. Got no answers from anybody else yet. Uh, Chairman, uh, the other persons and responsible authorities will now be watching on the live stream. OK, all right, thank, thank you. OK, so uh, we will now hand over to, <clears throat> to Mark, our legal representative, and he um, will give our Oh, sorry, it froze for a bit there. Um, he will give our answer to the, our recommendation for the license today. Sorry. Thank you, Chairman. Can I just confirm you can hear me, please? Yes, we can, Mark. Thank you. So the proposal is as follows. Arising from consideration of the report, the evidence submissions from all parties have in regard to the statutory guidance, the Council's policy and the Licensing Act 2003, the application to grant the premises license, under the Licensing Act 2003 for Wavelength Spring Classic Festival and Outdoor Cinema be granted subject to the following. That the festival part of the application be withdrawn. Members noted that this was requested by the applicant. Those conditions put forward by environmental protection and agreed by the applicant in order to promote the prevention of public nuisance licensing objective. For the avoidance of doubt where any conflict exists between the conditions agreed with environmental protection and any conditions put forward in the original application, the conditions agreed with environmental protection would apply. Members noted that the applicant had agreed to remove the festival element from the application and only now intended to operate an outdoor cinema. Members further noted that this had impacted significantly on the concerns and representations raised by the responsible authorities in respect of the application. Members noted the contact that the content of the additional conditions and felt that these would address many of the concerns raised in respect of the licensing objectives. Members felt that the applicant's willingness to agree to these additional conditions was positive. Members also had regard to the detailed and comprehensive event management plan that covered the cinema aspect of the application and the matters set out within that document. Members felt reassured by the content of this documentation. Members also noted the representations from Newquay Town Council against the application being granted and set out in the report, and also the representation from the local electoral division member in respect of the application. And members took these representations into account when making their decision. Members felt that the concerns raised were reasonable, but felt that looking at the application as a whole, it was reasonable to grant the application subject to the additional conditions. Dealing with the various points raised in the representations, one, in respect of the representations relating to the location of the premises in a rural area and that the premises was near to businesses and residential properties, the subcommittee noted where the premises is situated but felt that the licence as granted would not undermine the licensing objectives. The subcommittee further noted no representations had been received from local residents or local businesses and that the applicant had agreed to additional conditions in respect of the prevention of public nuisance licensing objective. Two, members noted those conditions put forward by the police in order to promote the prevention of crime disorder licensing objective had been withdrawn by the police as they no longer had concerns in respect of the application. Three, members noted those matters raised by health and safety in order to promote the public safety licensing objective had been satisfied by the applicant and that health and safety no longer had concerns in respect of the application. Four, in respect of the representations relating to the location of the premises near to a coast path, Members noted the applicant had amended the application so there would be no access to the site on foot and no walk-in tickets. And members felt that as health and safety did not have concerns, then the license as granted would not undermine the licensing objectives in this regard. Five, in respect of the representations relating to planning matters, 
subcommittee noted no representations received from the local planning authority in respect of the application. Members felt the grant of the application would not undermine the licensing objectives and felt the planning issues raised did not impact on the licensing objectives. Six, in respect of the representations relating to an increase in traffic, the subcommittee felt that as this was now a much smaller application, then these issues should not arise. Members further noted the additional measures put in place by the applicant in this regard and felt the application as amended would not undermine the licensing objectives. <coughs> Seven, in respect of the representations relating to the potential impact on wildlife and in particular farmland birds, members were sympathetic to this but did not feel this issue was relevant in respect of the licensing objectives. Members also noted the applicant intended to undertake an ecological assessment. Eight, members noted if issues did arise at the premises, then the premises license could be subject to a review. And finally, nine, taking all the information and evidence into account, members concluded that this application would not undermine the licensing objectives and it was therefore reasonable and proportionate to grant the application. That's the proposal, Chairman. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, Mark. Um, do we have a proposer? I'm quite happy to propose. Councillor Lennox Boyd. And uh, uh, Councillor John Martin, the second. Thank you. OK. Um, thank you, Chairman. I'll do a roll call vote then. Uh, Councillor Lennox Boyd. Four. Councillor Luke. Four. Councillor Martin. Four. Thank you, Chairman. I can confer confirm that the motion has been carried. OK, thank you very much. Um, motions have been carried and um, if we want to hand over to Emma for a moment, um, if any more representations or whatever want to be put forward, she will be able to give you the information for that now. Uh, Chairman, I will now get confirmation that the live stream has finished and I will advise you when it has been turned off. OK.